Hey everybody, it's Jason Blaha here, and in a video I did yesterday, a discussion came up about the overhead press and whether it was dangerous or not. And when I mentioned some stuff about dumbbells, uh, someone in there said, yeah, but dumbbells are actually one of the best tools for correcting left or right or unilateral imbalances in your body. And I'm going to disagree with that, but if you guys will just hear me out, I'm going to present this in a way so that people actually understand how these imbalances develop better so that you can help prevent them and correct them as they happen. So uh, let me put on my plus five out of weaponsmithing, work on skill up my crafting a little bit, and let's talk about this. Now, some people are going to say, Jason, it's impossible. You're loading each side of the body with the exact same amount of weight. There's no way you're going to get imbalances. It'll correct imbalances. It has to. Well, I could make the same argument that with a barbell, look, if you've got 225 pounds on a barbell, most of that weight's on the very ends. Each side has the same amount of weight, give or take a pound. How are you going to develop imbalances on the barbell? Well, they do happen, don't they? You guys know why they happen? Besides the fact that some imbalances are normal, you're never going to be so perfectly balanced left or right that everything is going to be within a tenth of an inch when you measure it with tape measures or use a DEXA scan. You just, you just want to get it close. Close enough that you can't detect a strength difference or a visible difference. Uh, but it's never going to be perfect because humans will always have a dominant side. And that dominant side is always going to be slightly bigger. But we're trying to basically minimize that and not make it worse. Because it's actually there naturally. But obviously we don't want to make that imbalance worse. That's not a good thing. It's not a good thing for performance. It's certainly not a good thing for aesthetics. There, there's no goal in which people train in which it's really a good idea or beneficial to you to have an imbalance. So, uh, you know, obviously we don't want to make it worse. There's no benefit to us to do so. Only detriment. Now, it's also important to remember that a lot of people think they have imbalances in their head that they don't have. That is part of body image disorders and muscle dysmorphia. But that's another topic. So, think about how these imbalances happen. They happen because one side lifts more weight than the other, right? Uh, one of the side ends up taking more of the load. And people have this idea that, you know, well, the dominant side is going to take over and uh, you know, the other one's going to shift and you're going to push up with the stronger side. Right. Uh, and that happens with the barbell. And they're like, well, because the barbell tips, do you guys really think it makes that much difference as far as the tip of the barbell? That really makes a big difference on the weight. You're still dealing with most of the weight being out on the end on the outside of your hands. The reason it matters is because your body itself shifts under it. Now, people will do that for two reasons when they're lifting. Uh, number one, they're not, just not tight enough. They're not tight enough in focusing on moving the weight evenly. And number two, they're using shitty form while grinding out reps. When they're hitting grinders, people are trying to train to failure. And there is a point to training to failure. Training to failure does happen. Uh, there, there are benefits to it at certain times. But it shouldn't be all the time. It shouldn't be every exercise you do. And it's a damn good way to get muscle imbalances. Because what happens when most people start getting near muscle failure? Unless they're focusing on maintaining good form, what happens when the weight starts getting hard? Let's say you're going to go for your 10 rep max. And your you're most you can lift on this exercise, I don't care whether it's a chest press or an overhead press or whatever you're trying to do. Your max 10 rep set is 135 pounds. A lot of people, when they start getting fatigued, they start getting around rep seven, what happens? They're bench pressing, they shift their body. They shift under the load. Their whole torso moves over, or it shifts to the side like this even. Look at, there you see people who do that. The bar does this, their body does this. They shift their body under the load around, starting around rep seven or eight, sometimes nine when they're hitting a 10 rep max, right? They start shifting under and grinding. Why? because their weak side is pretty much almost reaching muscle failure. It's done. And so they shift over to let their dominant side take over. It doesn't do it automatically. You have to shift under and use shitty form to make it happen. Same thing with the overhead press. How many people, when they go to overhead press, it gets hard. You see them do this. You see that head thing. And I've watched guys do it who I've tried to work with in the past. A good friend of mine I had to break into that habit um, because I was training him to uh, get stronger. Which, incidentally, congratulations to him. He just made it on the SWAT team he was trying out for. Um, taking a lot of the training I gave him, uh, he ended up knocking their physical requirements out of the water. But he would do that really bad. And I've seen a lot of guys do that. And that's something I had to break someone of who I was working with a while back, a good friend of mine. But people will shift under the weight. That will cause imbalances. Why? 
because it's allowing the strong side to do more work. The left, say it's your left side that's weak, and for most people it is. The left side, because it's reaching failure, it's only got eight reps in it. Your, your right side might be able to good, be good for 10, and that might be your true 10 rep max. But if you maintain perfect form and you don't let the strong side dominate, it might actually only be your eight rep max. It won't be your 10 rep max, and that's where you should stop. And that's why when people talk about muscle failure, they're not talking about taking a lift to absolute failure to where you flop and jerk and shift and use shitty form to lift it. Failure means as many reps as you can do while maintaining good form and good technique. And when you can no longer do a rep with good technique, that was muscle failure. The very first rep that you shifted and side-loaded your body, that was muscle failure right there. You just hit it. Those next two or two reps you did weren't were beyond muscle failure. Your muscles just failed. Your form broke down. Muscle failure means as many reps as you can do while maintaining perfect form. Your weak side started giving out and your whole body shifted over to dominate. You don't do that. Failure is as many as you can do while keeping it even. A bench press should come down and up. Shouldn't be grinding. If you grind or one side ever tips lower than the other, your technique sucks. You need to quit doing that shit. You need to stay even so that when you fail, if one side fails, the whole thing fails. It should be a smooth movement. And your weak side will always get the same amount of work if you do that. Now, people will say, well, you know, but if you use a dumbbell to correct that, really? It won't. Because what happens when people are doing dumbbell presses and they have one side that's stronger than the other and they want to go to dumbbells correct the amounts and they start doing sets to failure and grinding out shitty reps. What do they do? They take their dumbbell presses and they shift to one side. Well, what happens? The weak side's now doing less work because your whole body shifts and you moved the dumbbells in a different position over your body. There are positions over your body with the dumbbell to where it is lighter and easier to use. The weak side is now doing less work and the strong side is having to do more work because of the way that you shifted. Well, that happens with dumbbells too. When you do that, what just happened? You made the exact same mistake you did on the barbell. You're going to continue to feed that imbalance. The stronger side is still doing more work. If it keeps doing more work, it's going to keep growing faster. If you want to be balanced, you have to limit your work and limit your muscle growth by your weakest, smallest side. If you don't, you will continue to perpetuate that imbalance. And everyone who does it with a barbell, who has an imbalance, who I see switch over to dumbbells to fix it, nine out of 10 times they make the same mistake and they shift over, they shift their body, they try to grind it out. What happens? They continue with that imbalance even with dumbbells. So people say, well, they can go to machines, that'll stop it then. No, even the hammer strength machines that are unilateral, Watch how many people you see, they go to do them, they'll shift on that pad underneath the weight and their strong side will end up doing more work. I've seen people do it. Even the machine won't fix it. The issue is not that the barbell causes imbalance, that dumbbells or a machine are going to fix, it's that people's technique causes an imbalance. And it happens even on isolation movements. You don't believe me? Go watch people do, do dumbbell curls, standing dumbbell curls. Um, you know where they supinate and pronate the wrist and they cheat a little bit. What happens? As they start reaching muscle failure, they cheat a little more on the weak side so that it does less work. So that they can complete the same number of reps as the strong side. And then they wonder why even with the dumbbells they have a bicep imbalance. The only way that will actually work, that dumbbells will fix the imbalance, is if you do purely concentration curls. You do an exercise in which you cannot cheat and you force the muscle to be locked into place and you struggle to where you can't cheat. But people can even cheat on a concentration curl by leaning their body back at the hard part. And if you're going to try to fix a muscle imbalance, you've got to make sure you don't do that. You've got to actually stop yourself from doing that and make sure that the weak side always does the same amount of work as the strong side. You don't need to come in and do more work. You don't need to do more one arm or one sided sets. You just need to make sure it does the same amount of work. Because if it does the same amount of work, it will eventually catch up or at least close enough to get the job done. All right, guys, but that's really all I have to say on that today. I hope it's been informative and I will talk to you guys next time.